everyone and welcome to His Kids Online. I'm so glad that you're here because last week we ended on a pretty serious note, the fall. And the fall marked the beginning of humans messing up. And when we initially fell, we were separated from God. So when Eve took that bite of the apple and Adam, when they, when they defied what God asked of them, we got separated and sin entered the world which is pretty serious. But today, we're gonna learn all about hope and our way back to God. And how does that happen? Well, that kind of reminds me of our memory verse. So why don't we start there? John 3, 16, we read, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. See, our hope is in Jesus, and that's what we're gonna learn today. Today we are starting in Ephesians, Ephesians 1 actually. We're looking at a letter that Paul the Apostle wrote to the people of Ephesus. Paul was chosen by God, and he was telling God's people about God's blessings. It starts here saying, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy without any fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So way in advance, God decided he wanted us in his kingdom with him, and he used Jesus to do so. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. When we say that God is rich in grace and kindness, I want you to think of something that's rich like a double chocolatey chunk brownie. It's sweet, it's chocolatey, it's decadent. It is full of so much yumminess. And God's love for us is full. It's rich in grace and kindness. So God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And we know every plan God has is good. And this is the plan. At the right time, he'll bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance. There it is again, he chose us in advance, not just to be saved by Jesus, but to be co-heirs with Jesus. We get to sit in his kingdom and we get to have all the blessings and kindness and grace that he wants us to have. He makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that the Jews who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit that he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. So God sent Jesus to save us, to be a direct line to him. And as I said at the beginning, Paul was writing this letter to the people of Ephesus. So let's finish up with what he was saying to them. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are rich in his glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. 
Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ, and he has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Hey guys, I'm Daniel, and this is Something Fun. I'm here with my friend Warren, Mr. Fix-It. So, the other day, Warren, I'm washing my hands. That's good. At good. home, and I go to shut off the water, and the handle breaks off in my hands, and I've got water spewing everything. What should I have done? Should I have called my cat in there to come lick up all the water? Should I have called 911, or should I have turned the water off? Let's ask Mr. Fix-It. What should I have done to solve this problem? Uh, yeah, definitely uh, turn the water off on that one. That's going to be the right answer. Okay. So you, you want to open up the cabinet doors underneath the, uh, the sink and there's a valve there and you turn it to the right and that will shut the water off and that will, you know, limit any damage, further damage from the water uh, throughout, oh, throughout your okay. house. So, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's it. Um, still called the cat in. She was thirsty and drank up all the water. and. Thankfully, I didn't have to call 911. There you go. Thanks, Mr. Fixit. I got another one, though. Mm. I'm having all kinds of problems. Man. I'm carrying a mattress down the stairs the other day, and I'm guiding the mattress down, and I'm trying to go down the stairs, and all of a sudden, it gets heavier than I can hold. And I just had to let it go so I could save my own life, and it hit the wall. Mm. And now I have a mattress in my wall. That's a so pretty hard mattress. Should I? <laughs> what should I do? Should I like go back up the stairs and get a tow cable and try to pull the mattress back up the stairs and start over should i call a drywall contractor to repair it or do i just sleep on it what should i do mr fix it mm. yeah if uh, if you're not handy with some drywall you probably want to uh, call that drywall contractor and he'll uh He'll take the mattress out for you, I'm sure, while he's uh, down That'd there nice. pat patching the wall up. So. Well, I hope he doesn't wake me up because I decided to just sleep on it. Oh, uh, well. All right, so one more. You got time? Uh, I got time. You got time. So the other day, I go to get ice out of my freezer, and I pull the drawer open, and everything's melted. Mm. And I've got freezer stew. What do I do? Do I scoop it all up into bags? and take it back to the grocery store and return all those items that I can't use anymore? Or give it to your cat. <laughs> oh, the cat, that would be good. Or maybe I should, maybe do I throw all that stuff away or do I get a new freezer? Like, I don't know what to do. I'm, I've made a mess of the kitchen. <laughs> well, yeah, the first thing you want to definitely do is uh, clean up the mess, at least discard everything that's uh, that's spoiled. They you won't know, take it should... back at the grocery store? No, I'm afraid not. Okay. I'm afraid not. Okay. So yeah, you're going to want to get rid of that and, and toss that because you don't want any kind of bacteria mold setting up in, inside the, mm. the freezer. And the, and the freezer might be repairable, so uh, might call a, a small appliance uh, contractor out to take a look at it. Um, and if not, yeah, you're looking at a new new freezer. So there are a couple things from today's Bible story in Ephesians 1 that really stood out to me. And the first one I want to touch on is Ephesians 1, 5. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. See, there's so much goodness in that scripture that we just read. God knew that we were going to fall short of his glorious standard. He knew that we were going to mess up and that sin was going to separate us from him. But God had a plan from the very beginning to bring us back to him. And that plan was Jesus Christ. See, what happened is, is Jesus left his glorious throne in heaven came down to earth, born as a baby, lived a perfect life as a human, like you and I, only we're not so perfect, right? But here's the really amazing thing, is that Jesus 
understands what we go through. He understands the world and, and things like temptation coming in and, and making us desire things that aren't of God. He understands that because I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Jesus was tempted by Satan himself. <gasps> he was. In Matthew 4, we read that Jesus was tempted three times. Three times. But he's able to say no because he knows the scriptures. Let's read. We're going to read the very last one. Next, the devil took him, Jesus, to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all of their glory. So Jesus is looking down and he can see all the glorious kingdoms about. He's looking at them. And Satan says this, I will give it all to you. So Satan's saying, Satan will give it all to Jesus if you, Jesus, will kneel down and worship me. Now imagine that. You're at the top of a high peak on a mountain, seeing all that could be yours. And Satan says, just worship me instead, and this is yours. But Jesus responds, get out of here, Satan. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Matthew 4, 8 through 10. See, Jesus was tempted. That was the third time he had been tempted, and each time he could say no. See, Jesus did it. He was perfect. And then he did something even more for us. Do you know what it is? Let's read Ephesians and find out. In Ephesians 1, 6 through 7, we read this. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out onto us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Did you catch that? See, what we're finding out is that we are brought back together with God through Jesus Christ, who lived a perfect life, who died on the cross for us, even though he was blameless and spotless, meaning he was sin-free. And when he died on that cross, did he stay down? No. He rose again three days later, defeating death and bringing us back together with God. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> That's amazing. See, God knew this all along. He knew that we would need Jesus. He had a plan for us. Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, saves us. So you may be thinking, okay, Miss Courtney, so you died on the cross and we're saved from our sins. How are we saved, though? Is there anything I have to do? Do I have to be like the most perfect person and, and just walk like Jesus perfectly and never make a mistake again? The answer is no. No, because we do fall short and we do mess up. But in Romans, we figure out how we can accept this beautiful gift. In Romans 10, 9, we read this. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's it, guys. That's how we unlock this gracious gift. We believe that Jesus Christ came here, lived the most perfect human life, died on the cross for our sins, and rose again. When we believe that with our hearts, when we believe what we read with our hearts, that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and we say it, meaning we say it out loud, we tell our friends, we tell our family all about Jesus Christ, we are saved. We are saved in that moment, in that second, no matter the mistakes we've made in the past, no matter the mistakes that we will make, we are forever saved when that moment happens. That's incredible. <laughs> that's amazing. So now you might be thinking, okay, Miss Courtney, that's great. I believe that. I believe that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I can say it out loud. Now what? Well, you can go on to get baptized, which means that's like celebrating that moment with everybody you know around you. But more than that, we don't want to just stop there. 
In Ephesians 1.17, we read that Paul is praying for these people. And he's wanting them to grow in their spiritual wisdom and knowledge of God. What does that mean? It means we continue to read the Bible. We continue to grow and know what God has in store for us so that when we're walking, we can live by example, so that when we're going out, we can be a light towards others. And when we understand what God wants for our life, well, then we can start living according to his plan for us. Oh, it's so good. So guys, I know that we covered a lot this morning. But what I really want you to remember is that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And when we believe in him in our hearts and we say it out loud, we are saved forever. There's nothing you can do to separate yourself from God after that. Nothing. So if you have any questions about what it means to be saved, or if you are saved and you'd like to go to the next step of getting baptized, ask any one of your leaders or your parents today. Until next time, guys. Don't have to worry about my life today. I know it sounds like short my day is Sometimes I hear the voice of things of old. Day my life is filled with love and joy because you are alive.